Hello everyone, to the students, academicians, clinicians present around the world. Welcome to the oral diagnosis and radiology webinar series. I, Dr. Priya Darshini from Faculty of Dentistry, Ames University, Malaysia will be your host for today. I would like to thank the organizers, our Ames University, Malaysia and Ambropin India for providing us immense support and guidance. The talk for today is Applied Aspects of CBCT and Insight by Dr. Sham Kishore from India. Dr. Sham Kishore was an he has got a 12 to 14 years of experience in academic and research. Uh, research. He was an assistant professor uh, in AJ Institute of Dental Sciences, Mangalore, and was a lecturer before in the Faculty of uh, Dentistry, Ames University, Kedah, Malaysia. He worked as a reader in 2011 to 2014 in International Institute of Dental Sciences and Research Center. And uh, he worked uh, as a senior lecturer from 2014 to 2020 in the School of Dentistry, International Medical University, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. He has got about 60 publications in the national and the international journals. He has presented more than 10 presentations in national and international conferences, including the presentations in the International Congress of Dental Maxillofacial Radiology at Spital Philadelphia, USA in uh, August 2019. Before we would introduce uh, our speaker to the dais, we can, I would like to introduce our uh, panelists for today. Professor Siva Balakrishnan, HOD of the Best Dental College, India. His area of interest is head and neck imaging. He is rightly opinion leader at uh, J. Morita. He played a key role in getting all the oral and maxillofacial radiologists of India in one platform. Uh, welcome, Prof. Shiva Balakrishnan. The next panelist for today is Dr. Gian, Gion. Sorry. Uh, he was a co-owner of SNAP, which is an oral diagnosis and radiology imaging center. His interests are oral radiology, CBCT, TMD, and research training. Welcome, Dr. The third panelist for today is Dr. Ambika. She's an astute uh, academician and passionate about learning about uh, new different fields of oral medicine and radiology. She maintains exclusively oral medicine and radiology practice under the name MaxoCare TMG. And she's also a consultant in many clinics. And I would, the upcoming uh, talk for 25th, that is the next Saturday, uh, is orofacial pain, that is the 12th specialty in dentistry by Professor Dr. Saeed Vasumidhi. And uh, for today, we will invite uh, Dr. Sham Kisho to deliver his talk. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Priya? Yes, doctor. Can I start my presentation yes, now? Yes, doctor, you can start. Thank you. A very good morning to everyone. Thank you, Dr. Priya, Ames University, and I'm in India for this opportunity. When Dr. Priya requested me to uh, deliver lecture on uh, applied aspects of CBCT, I just recollected my memory with Ames Institute of Dental Sciences, Malaysia. It was about 20 years ago, sorry, 10 years ago, where I worked uh, in Ames University with my, with my students of Ames University. And uh, 
This is Professor Smales, the then Vice Chancellor and Dean of School of Dentistry, Ames University. And I can also see Dr. Ramesh, the current Dean of Ames Dental Institute with late Dr. Robinson, Professor Comfort, Dr. Rohani, Professor Vihas, and uh, all my Ames friends, including Dr. Ravi, uh, Dr. Badri, Mani. Thanks for all this opportunity. Currently, I'm working as a director of Oromax Imaging Center in the heart of Mangalore city. It is a coastal city, which is famous for its beautiful beaches, cultural festivals like Kite Festival, Yakshagana, and Buffalo Race, which is unique in this part of the world. Mangalore is famous for education institutes, is a heart of uh, medical facilities. And uh, I did my BDS in Abhishetty Memorial Institute of Dental Sciences and MDS from Enapaya Dental College. With this short introduction, I would like to start my presentation now. The presentation goes as follows. We will see why imaging is needed in dentistry. A CT scan and CBCT scan, what is the difference in between them? Why there is a shift from 2D imaging to 3D imaging? And what does CBCT offer actually? And at the end, we will see some application of 3D imaging in dental speciality. It was in 19, 1895 when there was a discovery of X-ray by Sir William Bronjan, where it is considered as incredible era in the history of medicine. We got to see inside a structure of the body, which was key for diagnosis and treatment planning. 2D imaging was the backbone of diagnosis in dentistry for many years until 1996, where the first introduction of cone beam computer tomography machine was done by Newton. Cone beam computer tomography allows the 3D imaging of dental and maxillofacial structures, which is keyly important for diagnosis and treatment planning. The equipment of CBCT allows a high KV machine which is 90 to 120 kV pulsed X-ray beam is generated. Therefore, the approximately 20 second scan can expose the patient to only 3.5 seconds ionizing radiation. Let us see how CBCT is different than medical CT. Lower equipment cost, definitely, when compared to CT machine. Simpler image acquisition because uh, the machine rotates around the patient's head 180 degree or 360 degree, a one round complete. Shorter scanning time, about five to 40 seconds compared to different fields of view. Lower patient radiation dose, it is said that about 60, six to 15 times less radiation dose than CT machine. And compact size, we can make the patient to sit and take a CBCT scan or else we can make the patient to stand and take a CBCT scan. If at all the patient comes with a wheelchair, comfortably we can take a CBCT scan. If your dental clinical setup has a space of about seven and a half feet height and about 3.5 3 to four feet length, then you can comfortably accommodate a CBCT machine in clinical practice. So how CBCT is different than medical CT? In CT machine, we use a fan-shaped beam, whereas in CBCT machine, we use a cone-shaped beam. This is a source of X-ray, and this is a detector in CT machine. A series of axial plane slices from continuous spiral motion, we will get to see, we we'll get to get, get the image in CT. Whereas in uh, uh, cone beam CT machine, the beam rotates once around the patient's head and we use the fat panel detector to capture the image. Let us go through some 2D imaging now. Intraoral periapical radiography. Our favorite periapical radiography which we use in dentistry for clin different clinical setup. We get to see enamel, we get to see dentin, we get to see pulse space. See, this is a grossly decayed tooth here, 
and we can see the mesial buccal root, the distal buccal root, and the palatal root. All these different dimensions of the teeth is clearly visible along with the anatomical landmark, floor of the maxillary sinus, and zygomatic process of maxilla. But what is lacking here is the third dimension. We get to see the palatal root completely in this 2D radiograph, but we don't know whether the palatal root is inside the maxillary sinus, buccal to it, or palatal to it. Occlusal radiography, we get to see the impacted tooth clearly. But the missing information over here is whether the impacted tooth is causing root resorption or not, whether this impacted canine is within the maxillary sinus or within the nasal cavity. This information is missing here. Panoramic radiograph is a gift to dentistry. We get to see all the upper teeth, lower teeth, mandibular, arch, maxillary arch, condyle beautifully, coronoid process, maxillary sinus, nasal cavity. Entire maxillofacial skeleton is stretched and given to us. We are seeing an impacted tooth of 1.8, impacted tooth of 2.8 and 3.8. When I enlarge this area, what we see here is the root which is dilacerated. I can see inferior alveolar canal, but what information missing here is whether the root of the third molar is within the canal, buccal to the canal or lingual to the canal. So what is the limitation of 2D imaging? It is the superimposition and distortion. When you pass the X-ray, what all structures come in line with the radiation, it gets superimposed and we get to see all the structures in one plane. That is the limitation. Of course, with some sort of distortion as well. This is the IOPA and this is the implant placed What IUP gives us is the height and the length. The information missing is the width. So why this third information is needed for us? When we place an implant, we need to know this third dimension because few important structures are lying within it. One is the inferior alveolar canal and the nerve, and the other aspect is the shape of the bone. When we take a CBCT image of this section, we get to see the shape of the bone. It could be uh, vertical like this, but that could be concavity, broader base. The shape could be different like this. That could be a square shaped or rectangular shape, or if that could be a concavity within the bone. So one of the complications when we don't take CBCT and go with the 2D imaging for implant placement is this, that is the perforation of lingual cortical plate. So we got to know that CBCT provides us the missing three dimension. So to understand that third dimension, we need to understand planes of the body. There are three planes of the body. One is called frontal plane and another one is called sagittal plane and another one is called transverse plane. What is frontal plane? If you see this image, consider this as a glass slab. If you move this glass slab front and back, then we are going to see the structures in that area that is a frontal plane. If you move this, glass slab from right to left or left to right, what we need to see, what we are allowed to see is the sagittal plane. If you move this glass slab from front up to down or down to up, then we are going to get to see the axial plane is also called transverse plane and uh, it's also called horizontal plane. Each CBCT machine comes with a software. I use PlanMeca CBCT and the software is called Romexis. So let us see 
what the software provides us. This is a screen which allows us to see the image in axial section, coronal section and sagittal section. Planmeca software tells us as explorer scene, uh, screen, but different software may give it a name differently. We also call it as multiplanar reconstruction view. So this gives us real time imaging. We can move the cursor and view the different planes of the body. And we can see the anatomical landmarks as well as pathology in different direction. What you are seeing just now is axial section and now it is the coronal section. We can move the cursor according to our need. The third picture what we are seeing here is a sagittal section. We can scroll the mouse and see all the images which is coming through that section. Additionally, we get to see the reconstructed 3D image. We can move the cursor and move it up and down to see the structures in various direction of the head and neck region. The software allows us to go through different sections. We can rotate as well. Here we are seeing the mandibular nerve and the canal. The nerve will not be visible in the actual scan. We need to draw it. So let us see how we can draw the nerve within the software. We can scroll the mouse in different sections of the panoramic view to see the exact location of inferior alveolar canal. So when we get to see the inferior alveolar canal properly, we have to select the particular tool and we have to mark it manually. Move the screen according to your view and mark it completely until the mental foramen exists. Once you're done with the marking, you can see the entire image in panoramic view properly. And this is how it goes. There is another facility called implant screen to see the cross section for implant placement. What we see here is a panoramic reconstruction. If at all we are planning for implant placement in this area, we can see the image of cross section here. So we, we are able to measure the bone height as well as width, and we can easily see the inferior alveolar canal and the nerve what we have marked. So we can move this cross section line according to our need from right to left, left to right. Here now I have placed the cross section line to this area and we can see the bone in this area and we can measure it as well. We can move it for three, four, seven direction and we are able to see the bone height and width and we can mark it as well. Software allows us to place the implant virtually we can place the crown as well. There is something called implant centric view, which allows us the implant placement to see the implant placement in different direction. We can adjust accordingly. We can see in the 3D rendering image as well in different sections so that we are sure that it is away from the nerve canal.
Okay, you may be wondering whether a panoramic image is, has to be taken separately when we take a CBCT scan. It is not so. The scan allows us to reconstruct the panoramic image and we get to see according to our need. If you select the smaller field of view, then we'll be able to see the panoramic reconstruction of that area. This is maxillary posterior area. We'll be able to see the panoramic reconstruction as well. So field of view can be selected according to our need. If at all we are assessing a fracture in the head and neck area, entire maxillofacial skeleton can be seen. If you are planning for an implant placement of one tooth, or if you are planning to assess an endodontically treated tooth, we can just restrict the film to a smaller area. If you want to take just mandible, you can go ahead and take the mandibular field of view and maxillary view as well. How can we make use of CBCT in our field of dentistry? Application of CBCT is wider in the field of dentistry. Virtually, we can use it in all the fields of our dentistry, starting from oral diagnostics to implantology, oral surgery for assessment of third molar impaction or any surgical case, orthodontics for impacted canine, endodontics to assess the missing canal or failed endodontic treatment to assess endodontic periapical lesion, periodontics to assess the bone height and width before the peri periodontal surgery, periodontics to assess the mixed dentition and pathology in the childhood in adenic area, prosthodontics, implant retained denture or, or some processes analysis, dental research, CBCT is used worldwide, worldwide to, for different uh, dental research purposes. Beyond dentistry, we have its use in ENT as well to assess the middle ear imaging, airway analysis, as well as uh, the sinus analysis of maxillofacial region. Thus, the application of CBCT is ideal for condyle, few teeth analysis, analysis of maxilla and mandibular teeth, the teeth with some neighboring structures, and extended view allows us to view entire craniofacial skeleton as well. Having understood this, let us see CBCT application in different fields of dentistry where, by illustration of few cases. So let us see uh, CBCT in oral surgery first. Impacted third molar assessment. In this screen, what we see is the impacted third molar and we get to see that it is close to the inferior alveolar canal. A CBCT is taken and at this section, what it shows is the mesial root is in close proximity with the inferior alveolar canal. So this information is crucial for an oral surgeon who plans to extract this impacted third molar. There is a possibility of parasthesia on trying this impaction. Impacted third molar, another case. Here also we could see that the root is in close proximity to the inferior alveolar canal. When you take a CBCT, it sh clearly shows that root is very much away from the canal, so the surgeon can plan the treatment accordingly. Another case of displaced root stump of 2.6. At times, a grossly decayed tooth when we plan for extraction it separates from the root. Further, when we attempt extraction of the root stump, it may slip into the maxillary sinus. So the CBCT was advised. And when we take, took a CBCT, what we could see is the oroantral communication clearly. And the missing root stump is over here at the, tip of, at the top of the maxillary sinus. When you see this in different sections, additional information what we, we get to see is that the root tip is in close proximity to nasolacrimal canal. This information is crucial for an oral surgeon who plans to take out this root stump. With the software, we are able to measure the height and width of the root stump clearly. This is a 3D reconstruction 
where we can locate the displaced root of maxillary molar. This is a panoramic image and we are able to see one radiolucent lesion in the maxillary anterior region. What we see here is its extension and a root resorption also can be seen over here. But what information missing here is whether it is causing the palatal resorption, whether it is invading into the maxillary sinus or whether it is invading into the nasal cavity. This information is missing. So the CBCT was advised and we can clearly see the lesion in all the three directions. We can measure the length and width of the lesion as well, which is going to help be helpful for the oral surgeon. There is perforation of the nasal floor, what we see here in all the three dimensions. Loss of palatal cortical plate and expansion of the lesion palatally is clearly seen. There is loss of buccal cortical plate as well from in the region of 2, 3 to 2, 5. Impacted tooth in anterior mandible is another case. Here, the clinician wanted to see the proximity of the impacted canine with 4-2, that is lateral incisor, whether it is causing a resorption of the root, whether the tooth is buccally placed, lingually placed. The CBCT gives us a clear picture of the impacted tooth like this. It is a horizontal impaction and the tooth is well placed labially. The labial approach should be fine for this. We'll get to see the exact dimension of the, can, of the impacted tooth using the software. Additionally, we get to see the information that the impacted canine is very close to the lingual canal. This is very much needed. So surgeon has to plan the extraction carefully without damaging the vital structure there. Additionally, the clinician's doubt was whether it is causing root resorption of lateral incisor, but CBCT reveals that there is no root resorption, but it is in close proximity in all the three sections. CBCT in endodontics. This is a case of suspected calcification of 2-1. The clinician tries to locate the canal, but it is very difficult to locate. CBCT allows us to locate a very faint canal with the patency properly seen at the mid root level. Axial section in different slices. There is complete calcification in the coronal aspect of the root, but in the mid root level, what we see here is a patency of the canal. CBCT allows us to measure the patency of the canal, the length of the root, as well as the distance from the floor of the chamber up to the patency of the canal. Another case of assessment of root canal treatment for up, upper anterior region. Different sections shows that the tooth one, there is no periapical pathology. In different axial sections, we can see there is no pathology as such. 221, the root canal treatment is done very well. We can see in different axial sections as well. For 222, we can see the resorption of the apical region over here. Root canal treatment is properly done and we can see in different sections as well. So endodontic assessment can be done using CBCT for all these fields, including we can measure the resorption, how much is 0.81 accurately. Assessment of periapical lesion in 4.4 and 4.5 region. Since the lesion is in close proximity to the inferior alveolar canal. The clinician wants to 
wants to evaluate whether it is some pathology related to mental foramen region or inferior alveolar canal, or it is exactly a periapical pathology. The CBCT reveals that buccal cortical plate perforation is happening in this non endurontically treated tooth. In 4 5, there is root resorption as well as the periapical pathology, which has caused the resorption of the buccal cortical plate. The lesion, of course, is in close proximity to the mental foramen, but there is no widening or distortion of the opening of the mental foramen. Endodontic assessment can be done to check the root canal in any particular tooth using CBCT. In this case, you can see the tooth 2-6 in the coronal aspect, sagittal and axial aspect. At axial region, we can take the scan and analyze the scan in different uh, root length at bif bifurcation area, what we see here. If there is any fracture in any of the sections, we'll be able to clearly see. What software additionally gives us is the assessment of working length. We can clearly do the measurement even if the root is curved like this. CBCT in orthodontic cases, evaluation of impacted 1, 3, and 1, 4. There is an impacted tooth over here that is 1, 3, and impacted 1, 4 as well. Clinical has seen a radio opaque lesion in between those two. So on CBCT analysis, we could see that multiple tooth-like structures in between the 2-2 and 2-5 within the alveolar bone, which we can see in different sections. There is visibility of dentin, pulp space, and enamel clearly. That is why we can consider it as compound odontoma. There is vertically impacted 1-3, located within the maxilla, maxillary bone, but with the distal tilt to the root. But when you consider 1-4, the tooth is vertically impacted, of course, but it is within the maxillary sinus. So this information is very crucial for orthodontists as well as oral surgeon when they plan the treatment. 3D reconstruction of this case, we can clearly see the impacted two teeth in different sections. Evaluation of impacted two, three this is another orthodontic case. The clinician has seen the impacted tooth. The root seems to be within the maxillary sinus, but before starting the treatment, need to get it confirmed using CBCT. Three different sections, we can see the impacted tooth well within the maxillary bone, but the root alone has gone within the maxillary sinus. This information we'll be able to get only with the CBCT. Let us see application of CBCT in periodontics. Periodontal evaluation of 1-4. There is a lot of bone loss, vertical bone loss in 1-4 region. So when we assessed this case using CBCT, in the coronal section, we can see the loss of bone in both buccal and palatal direction. Clearly, we can see there is no interdental bone at this area. We can accurately measure the loss of buccal bone, 3.15 millimeter in the buccal side and in the palatal side, it's 4.65. So this information is helpful when the periodontist plans flap surgery and bone grafting. In 3D reconstruction, we can again see the loss of bone in that direction. 
Next case is the evaluation of right maxillary posterior region and right maxillary sinus. There is definitely periodontitis horizontal bone loss in this picture. The tooth was mobile in maxillary posterior region. One tooth was extracted, another was extracted. When the third tooth was again mobile, so the clinician wanted to check what is going wrong. So what we see here is the haziness in the maxillary sinus compared to the other maxillary sinus. When you saw in CBCT, we could see that there is loss of buccal and lingual cortical plate at the root area of 1.6 in all the three dimensions. We can see the oroantral communication clearly in this aspect. So that could be the reason for mucosal thickening because periodontitis was already there. Oroantral communication is existing there. So that might have caused maxillary sinus mucosal thickening in this case. There is an incidental finding we get to see sometimes in the CBCT scan, which is thickening of left, middle, and inferior nasal conca in all the three sections. Let us see the CBCT application in implantology. Implant placement at the region of 2-1. We can definitely measure the dimension what is available for implant placement using the software. Region of 2-1, we can see and measure the bone availability, the width of the bone, the height of the bone until the anatomical landmark. This is extraction socket. We are able to measure the, the length available bone from the base of the socket until the anatomical site. What we have marked here is the nasopalatine canal. So clinician has to be careful about this anatomical structure planning when planning for implant placement. Software gives us opportunity to place the virtual implant and we can adjust it accordingly. We can see it in three dimension as well. Implant placement at the region of three, six and three, seven. The vital structure is inferior alveolar canal here. The bone height and width can be measured exactly and we can be safe that we are not involving the implant into the canal. There is about 14 millimeter height in this cross section for implant placement. Virtual implant placement in uh, 36 and 37 region, we can move the cross section and see it in three dimension and make sure our implant placement is fine. Implant placement at the maxillary posterior region. Not all the cases are straightforward like how I showed you earlier. Here there is very thin bone. So CBCT shows the exact length and width of the bone available for implant placement. Additionally, we get to see that there is a mucosal thickening over here. And this is an important anatomical landmark that is posterior superior alveolar artery groove. Why it is important? For example, in the region of 1.7, the bone height is very less, even though there is enough width for placement of implant. If the surgeon plans implant placement at this region, a sinus lift procedure has to be done. That time, the location of posterior superior alveolar artery groove is important to know so that we won't damage that structure. Another incidental finding in this CBCT scan was the retained root stump in relation to 1.7, which was not visible in two-dimensional image. With this, I would like to conclude the talk saying that be vigilant on using CBCT because advise, we have to advise the CBCT only when the required information is not available in 2D imaging. 
When you are in doubt, go for CBCT for accuracy of diagnosis and the treatment. Limit the field of view as per the need. If at all you are planning to assess the entire maxillofacial region, go for higher field of view. If you are planning to assess one tooth or two teeth, you just go for smaller field of view so that radiation dose for the patient will be less. With, with this information, I'd like to conclude my talk. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Sam, for a wonderful... Hello? Ah, yes. Thank you, Dr. Sham, for a wonderful presentation. And uh, thank you so much. I think you need to hydrate yourself with some water <laughs> after, a, after a long talk. Yeah. And uh, this is the time we will open the qu question and answer sessions. And I would like to introduce all the panelists to come online for the question and answer session. Dr. Gian and Dr. Shiva and Dr. Ambika. Yes, doctor. Then thank you so much for being the panelist for today. And uh, let me start the question and answer session so I can address uh, a question to one, one person so you can answer the question. This question is to Dr. Gion. Okay. Many times the inferior alveolar nerve is bifurcated. So can we trace such complex nerve anatomy in CBC, using a CBCT so software, Doctor, am Hello. I audible? Yeah, yeah. 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 Can Hello. I repeat yeah, the yeah. question? Yeah, no, I got the question. I got the question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, actually, bifurcation, anterior loop, any deviation. If we go to the most minute section, I mean, now we are available seventy-five microns. We can definitely trace it. It takes more experience. The more complicated case you get you can definitely trace any minute alteration you get like uh, one of the point i really wanted to ask dr sham is regarding the psa group that you mentioned such anatomical landmarks which usually are overlooked and many such deviations i think recently one of the doctors came up with new uh, anatomic findings variations so to answer the question all such bifurcations may be difficult to spot but is definitely traceable if you know how to look, and of course, that only comes with experience. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I would so just much. like to add to this, uh, Dr. Piyadashni. Actually, uh, having CBCT is really a boon, not only from the cases of uh, detailed uh, structure, internal structures, which we can see, but when it comes to inferior alveolar nerve canal, if we see the clinical implications, like if someone would ask, uh, knowing the different anatomical positions of uh, the mandibular canal, how is it really helpful? There is something called as the anterior genu, which you call as the looping of the inferior alveolar nerve canal. The anterior genu is definitely known that when we are placing implants during the anterior section of the mandible, and suppose that there is an overextension of this mandibular canal, which is not usually present, you know. And if in CBCT we noted, okay, that during the placement, the surgeon knows that okay, there is an anterior looping present, and hence my implant should not come in proximity to that inferior alveolar nerve canal. This will prevent in a massive cases of neuropathic lesions which are being present, you know, because many a times the surgeon places the implants and then the patient complains of numbness. And this numbness which is present near the mental foramen, near this anterior genu, is one of the most common problems the surgeons are facing, you know, when the patient comes back later on. So when we are doing implants left, right and center, you know, having such knowledge coming from the CBCT sections is definitely much useful to the clinician. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Yeah. And Dr. Shiva Balakrishnan, can you add up, uh, you want to add up anything to this? Uh, nothing, nothing much. She has answered everything. <laughs> thank you, Doctor. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. And um, there's another question uh, to Dr. Sham Kishore. Uh, 3D, yes. Sorry, 3D reconstruction is always accurate presentation of the pathology. Is it true or false? 
3D reconstruction, which we do it using a CBCT, is always a accurate representation of a pathology. What do you think about it? No, 3D reconstruction is not it's not accurate. Definitely, we need to even the panoramic image. What we get right, uh, we can't do the measurements in panoramic image in the CBCT because but you can do the measurements in axial, coronal, and uh, sagittal sections. So it is just the overall reconstruction to give, give the clinician a rough idea what the pathology is. Definitely it is, uh, we can't do the measurement. That's why a measurement option is not given in the 3D reconstruction volume in most of the CBCT uh, softwares. Uh, it is just, uh, it looks fancy, you know, but when, when, when you present something, so add a 3D image, oh, wow, that's nice. So it is just a overall assessment, not definitely for accuracy or measurement. Okay, thank you. Thank you, doctor. And this question is to Dr. Shiva Balakrishnan. Can we use CBCT in sleep apnea cases for imaging sleep uh, yeah. apnea patients? How to do it, okay, doctor? Yeah. I would like to add up a point what Dr. Sham had claimed. There is a point called thresholding. I think, doctor, and I think, doctor, your uh, voice is breaking. Hello? Yeah. Hello, doctor, your voice is breaking. I think there is a connectivity issue there. Can any one of the doctors answer to this question? I'll repeat the question. How to use CBCT imaging in sleep apnea patients? How to do it? Any, yeah, any no, doctor? I'm, yeah. yeah, I'll just initiate the talk. Uh, see, in sleep apnea cases, definitely we know that the major etiology lies from the structure of uh, the mor morphological structure of the soft palate or the airway uh, uh, region, you know. So when it comes to sleep apnea, CBCT recent uh, softwares have this uh, analogy wherein they have the colorful version to see the volumetric imaging of that airway. And hence, when you come to know where exactly the obstruction or how much is the obstruction, what type of uh, treatment modality should one go for? Because there are various modalities for treating sleep apnea, whether you have the uh, orodental issues present or you have the soft palate uh, imaging uh, because of which we come to know that we need to know the uh, PAP um, uh, instrument which we use for the sleep apnea. So CBCT is definitely, only thing is that the older versions might not be really helpful when it comes for the airway analysis. It has to be a recent uh, uh, software which would help you to evaluate the volumetric uh, analysis of your airway. And that is how in sleep apnea it is really very helpful. Like someone else wants I like, to add. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, actually one more problem is as you said, the recent tools have airway analysis. But one of the main drawbacks and that always remains with CBCT is that as you mentioned the soft palate. The soft tissue reconstruction will always be limited. Now that is one of the things which we always boast that yeah, compared to CT, the radiation is less. But this drawback in CT, you will get the soft tissues much better compared to CBCT. So though the airway analysis tool will help you trace the airway from the fairings all the way down, but the soft tissue limitation, especially when you have soft tissue lesions as well, it becomes a big problem. So that yes, is one of... Yeah, I'll just add to it, the, one of the inherent uh, disadvantages of a CBCT is the image noise because of the type of the cone beam which it's having. So the amount of radiation, scattered radiation is much higher as compared to a CT. So all the, all the blocks, CBCT is much better than CT scan. But when it comes to image noise, we always have a bad hand in CBCT. So that's why they introduced MAR recently in all the machines. But despite having MAR, there is limitation when it comes to soft tissue reconstruction, something which I think uh, the people who are working on it will be looking into. I think Shiva sir could answer better since he likes to <laughs> deal with the physics part. Yeah. But I think that is one thing that needs to really, because I get a lot of cases where we have soft tissue lesions and then eventually we have to send them for USG. We can give them a rough idea, but not an accurate idea of exactly the extent of the soft tissue lesion. So that's why especially addressing ENT issues. Uh, I would like to add one point. 
see cbct does not show low contrast densities you cannot see low contrast densities so there is no possibility that you can see a soft tissue lesion very clearly there you only get it in shades of gray and white that's it spatial resolution is good but low contrast densities will never be seen on a cbct ct is better or as you mentioned you should go in for usg uh, i would like to mention two softwares uh, for av analysis one is on demand 3d you should measure it in cc that is cubic and uh, you have one more uh, software which is uh, i'm not getting the name but on demand 3d is good enough most of the softwares that we get we don't actually measure the volume we just measure the uh, uh, area of it it comes in cm cube that is not volumetric analysis you have to get it in cubic cc okay, okay. and thank you thank uh, you yeah yeah thank you thank so, you so sorry doctor you can continue continue please no nothing I, this is what i wanted to mention and for the 3d which sham had explained there is a, a term called thresholding when you get a 3d reconstructed image i can remove the entire image and show you only the enamel there mm. that is called thresholding when you press the mouse and move it you move away all the structures completely but there is an advantage let me explain to you suppose you see a calculi you want to see or doubt if it's a calculi or is it bone really if you know the window level and width you place all the structures in that window level and width only the calculi will be seen all the other structures should disappear right you can apply it in two one is you use thresholding you remove the entire structures that is why it's not useful in diagnosis part but just to show you the uh, what to say uh, clarity of it you see it in a different color but you can also use it the other way when you check for the window width and length if you have a particular structure you know that uh, this is the hounds feel of that particular structure and it appears within this window length you should mark it and check for other structures are they also calculi or this is the only calculi seen in that region thank you so much uh, <laughs> thank you prof and there's another question which is open to anyone and you can answer which is the best cbct mission Uh, nowadays to um, yeah with the recent software which one is best nowadays uh, i would like to clarify and <laughs> do you want the best software or you do want the best machine because i ask most of the people when you buy a good machine you can buy any software you want it is like buying an elephant and buying a chain to tie the elephant you feel you like the chain so you have bought the elephant it's a big mistake <laughs> buy a good elephant and then you can buy whichever chain you want to tie it up it's a simple as it see whichever machine that you buy all that we want as sham had explained the areas where you can use cbct he did not mention i mean he has mentioned he has done a good job i would like to add one point there's one point called 3d printing and digital dentistry when you go to this most of us want to take out the dicom file and use the dicom file for any digital dentistry part now most of the machines give us dicom files very true but do we have a compatible software which can accept any dicom file from any machine into it that is the question see now if you take on demand 3d you take any dicom file from any machine it can open in on demand 3d plus on demand 3d has features you can open even a ct image you can even open an mri image please remember cbct is isotropic voxel so none of our dental uh, cbct viewers will not be able to open ct or mri images but on demand 3d which is a third party viewer can open even ct mri and cbct images so you buy a machine that you like now coming to the simple example what do i mean if you say uh, uh, jion just mentioned you have 
uh, machines with clarity as uh, 0.080 voxel size. That is, you're getting a very good clarity. Now, for that very good clarity, a smaller voxel size, you have to use excess of radiation and to get, a, get better clarity without noise. Noise in the sense, no dots, very clear image. Now, you have to choose a machine. In choosing a machine, there are certain conditions I can put forward. One is many of the machines or most of the machines give streaking artifacts when you take for implants. There is one component in a CBCT machine called the bow tie filter. Bow, your tie bow. You use a tie, you wear a bow instead of a tie. It's called a bow tie filter. None of the machines have a bow tie filter. Now, uh, where do these filters really help? They help in sending the beam directly parallel without deviation. You can just imagine a spotlight and a tube light. Tube light lights up the entire room, a spotlight and lights up only the particular area. So a tube, bow tie filter is very important. One of the machines that had a bow tie filter is AccuItomo 170. But our normal machines don't have them. But yes, there is a certain amount of uh, reduction in the uh, streaking has happened. The second thing that you have to take up, technically issues where a patient is exposed for a CBCT and then you have got the raw data. The raw data gets converted to a DICOM file through filtered back projection algorithm. And when you see the image, there is distortion. So you are going to expose the patient the second time. But there are machines that give you the option to go to the raw data, select from which angle there is distortion, remove that angle. Suppose you are taken a 360 degrees exposure, you remove one to 90, from 90 to 270, you send it for filtered back projection to the algorithm, complete your image from the raw data, you will get a DICOM file. So you're not exposing your patient the second time. This is not permitted in many of the machines on very, I think only one machine has this option. It's J Morita. J Morita has that option. Next, when you go in for other machines, the voxel size differs for each and every machine. Very true. And frankly, most of our dentists don't understand or they are not technically, or uh, they're not engineers. Everyone who buys a laptop has to have a graphic card. Most of our students buy a laptop without graphic card where the 3D reformatted image never appears on the screen. And they say, sir, what is the problem? <laughs> ah, so we do need a good RAM and a graphic card inbuilt in a laptop. Of course, now you have external graphic cards that can be connected to a laptop and then you connect it to a different screen like a TV screen. You can do that, sure. but uh, this is one feature, okay? And you have other features like uh, open-ended software. When you're choosing a uh, software, buy an open-ended software where you can have, uh, get in DICOM files from any machine that you want. You can open it in that software. Suppose I mentioned on-demand 3D. There are two softwares which Sham Kishore had sold about Endo. You have something called as 3D Endo. Has anybody heard about it? 3D yeah. Endo. Please go to the site by Sirona. It's not by Sirona. It is done by a Zurich company bought in tie up with Sirona. And you can take that software and you can mark the working length on it with a uh, reamer type or a file. It can show you exactly like a file. You can mark all the working lengths of all the root canals present in it and then take a uh, photo of it. Mm -hmm. Then you have a Brazilian software called Vox 3D, Vox DL, which can give you the three dimensions of a root and you can mark the working length. Mm -hmm. In, in on-demand 3D, you have something called as merging of two images, which is not present in any other software. No other software does it. 
so there are various options various options which i can tell you it's my opinion is buy a good machine and choose any software that you like to link to it on demand 3d can be linked to on i mean j morita can be linked to on demand 3d it is done by the company itself we just have to have something called as twain drivers you link it all your machines images come directly to on demand 3d software there are many uh, important points as you learn i mean you'll get to understand uh, what are we doing okay these are certain certain points which i had to put up of course my credit to four people who i really have to mention before i uh, stop is uh, you have the four members who invented cbct i'm going to read their names in 2013 they received a Uh, memento or a award in the festival at Genova, Genova, Italy. Yeah. Yeah. They are called Attilio Tacconi, Terio Mozzo, Daniele Gordi, and Giordina Ronca. These are the four people who first uh, who received an award and they did CBCT entirely for dental purpose. And the first CBCT machine by Newton is still functioning. Yeah. is still functioning and the images are also been uh, put on the net you all can go and check up thank you thank you thank you doctor thank you so much for such a uh, valuable information and this is the next question which is uh, open to any of the panelists and the speaker uh, please comment on the limitations of cbct limitations of cbct Uh, one or two things yeah. what i can say is uh, the noise and uh, the soft tissue rendering what uh, we had discussed at the uh, earlier uh, in this discussion and the artifacts so this three things uh, <laughs> yeah, other panel members can discuss more about it but uh, these are the three limitations what uh, we have observed all these days um, any further clarification on this uh, dr shiva Okay. yeah i would like to add up a point but yeah. it's not the limitation it's a uh, general knowledge that we have to gain as dentist one of the radiotherapist asked me what do you have to do with cbct i said uh, our dental images 3d uh, images are taken with cbct i think most of a dentist do not know when you use an radiotherapy machine igrt that is image guided radiotherapy or imrt uh, uh, when you do the selection of the object or the location where you have to give radiotherapy the most of the structures in the body are dynamic moving suppose your heart your heart is booting beating so it keeps moving they also use a cbct to do the dynamic uh, marking of a moving object before giving radiotherapy it is the same cbct why cbct gives you the because the voxel size is isotropic what you measure on a patient is the same that you measure on the software so they do the marking with the cbct with the help of a cbct and then go in for igrt or imrt you can take it up or clarify with the radiotherapist if you have a radiotherapy center nearby dentists still have an option don't think cbct this is the limit there are you can still think of integration with other branches this is one branch which i can mention that with cbct they do marking for the moving object before it, the patient goes in for radiotherapy in igrt or imrt thank you thank you thank you doctor there's another question how to use cbct imaging in tmd cases there is a uh, option to select uh, temporomandibular joint uh, um, in the when we select the uh, fold, field of view in the cbct machine so we just have to focus on the cb uh, condyle area and uh, take a cbct scan we just we can take uh, it can be seen when uh, with the full uh, fov as well or we can restrict the field to uh, condyle area and take with the cbct scan we can watch it in three dimension definitely 
we won't be able to see the articular disc and the soft tissue involved in the TMJ, but morphological assessment of TMJ area can definitely be done using CBCT. I, I have a suggestion and we always had a discussion with uh, Amrita Dental College in Kochi. We had a case recently, a couple of cases, and whenever we talk about TMD imaging in CBCT, uh, well, first thing is yeah, the TMJ tomogram, open and close is a must. We have to take that radiograph even before thinking of CBCT. We only, whenever we get patients, doctors don't realize, they just write TMJ, CBCT. I call them up, I tell them, first we need to take a TMJ tomogram. After that, another thing we discussed with, I had a discussion with the Amrita Dental College is that whenever we get a TMJ, whether it's unilateral or bilateral, always try to take both, that is open mouth as well as closed mouth CBCT because as, we, as you said, uh, we cannot get the articulate disc. So when we get the translational movement between the open and the closed mouth, whether there is medial displacement, lateral displacement, anterior or posterior, that can be clearly explained only if we take both. If you're only taking closed mouth, we are limiting ourselves. Of course, the difficulty here is you cannot ask the patient to pay twice. So as a person who's running the place, you have to decide what will be your charges because you have to take two exposures. Yes, the exposure also increases, but it is better to get both open and closed mouth CBCT, just like we take for TNJ tomogram. Yeah, I would just like to add to this further that when it comes to CBCT, like when we have the conventional radiographic techniques for TMJ, like if someone would ask, you know, how CBCT is more much more helpful, I would say that in CBCT, there is something called as an oblique slicing, which is very specific to CBCT rather than CT scan. So what it does is 2D images, it converts into non-orthogonal images, which results in multi-planar reformation. Now, this MPR, which is a multi planar reformation, it actually allows you that at any non isolated section, you can take the sectioning and you can actually evaluate the entire morphological aspects of the TMJ. Now, when it comes to TMJ, clinical implications of the same, that what exact cases which we see and how are we going to correlate with the CBCT. When a patient comes in the clinic, the major complaints for the TMJ is reduced mouth opening or either there is asymmetry, either there is trauma factor, or any pathology associated with the developmental anomaly or, and, and so forth. So when it comes to uh, CBCT, not only do we understand the entire surface anatomy of that TMJ, which helps us to remove if any degenerative changes have come in that patient, you know, which is very initial signs of uh, inflammatory uh, diseases. So if uh, there's any degenerations which are there, if there is any uh, uh, just which are present, the elite cysts which are present. So they really help if the degeneration process has started. Another important feature is many patients who come with the uh, saw or symmetry. Many a times we just see the TMJ uh, structure and we see that okay, this is absolutely normal. So it's very inconclusive of why the asymmetry is there. The spatial arrangement of the condyle in the glenoid fossa is best evaluated in CBCT. So you will actually see that how the condyle is placed in the glenoid fossa, if there is any facial, uh, you know, asymmetry which is present at that level, due to which the asymmetry is there. Secondly, when it comes to TMJ fractures, they are best seen in CBCT. As Dr. Siva also mentioned, the voxel size of CBCT, it ranges from 0 0.4 to 0 0.09. You know, that specific as compared to a CT scan, which is I think to 0 0.6 to 5 uh, millimeters. So if you see the resolution and the accuracy when it comes to image accuracy of CBCT, if compared to CT scan, it is much more higher. So, and as Dr. Gion said that, you know, you have to take open and closed mouth both for taking the uh, TMG analysis. Yes, definitely it's a must. You can't just rely on one aspect and, you know, conclude your uh, diagnosis into it. So they are definitely, yes. And uh, as Dr. Shan said, the soft tissue structure, the disc, that position cannot be seen on a CBCT. We have to rely when it comes uh, clinically for patients. Really, you see the clicking of the joint is there. You see that mouth opening is not there. And despite CBCT, if it is not really giving you results, MRI uh, cannot be ruled out. You have to go for an MRI and back to a uh, dynamic MRI. You know, something where you can see the movements of the disc that where exactly it is obstructed. So CBCT is really helpful when it comes to TMG analysis. Especially for degenerative diseases, there have, I've got multiple cases where we could find osteophyte or bony spicules, which could yeah. be only seen in specific minute slices where you can appreciate using CBCT. But when it comes to internal derangement, based on the patient's history, clinical history, chair side investigation, then seeing the translational movement, you can, 99% you can arrive at a diagnosis.
but still if you want a confirmatory you will have to go for an mri but again it's rarely required most of the cases yes. we are able to diagnose prof uh, Sh Sh shiva balakrishnan you have anything to say doctor uh, nothing uh, i think uh, ambika but tiwari has to... answered okay there's another question um any 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 of the panelists or the speaker can answer this question is the bone density analysis using cbct is reliable in implant planning it's a good question <laughs> the big uh, question that comes is the difference between the harmful unit and the grayscale values which we get in a cbct are they equally reliable or not we have uh, uh, studies different charts to count that values but even i have that question often especially when we go for uh, bone types like d4 and d5 and uh, uh, let's be honest uh, the implantologist who sends us a cbct wants to put an implant unless it is absolutely hopeless Uh, so unless it is unless it is knife edge or pencil or flat bone if we type i tell him that it's okay d4 or d5 they are most likely not going to refrain they will go for it so i think i shiva sir should answer this uh, uh it's a really good question my very important i mean a point which i have noticed is you measure the bone density that is uh, differences in densities in one software and you put the same dicom file in another software you will get a different reading why if it was the same all the cbcts could have been comparable you take an image from one cbct you can compare it on the next cbct but that is not possible here because our softwares are entirely different and if you note please take up any software and go to the settings part in the software if you can see the settings the individual software or the programmer has set at this value enamel should be white at this value enamel should be brown at this value enamel should be uh, yellow in color there is a setting value given for each uh, teeth bone enamel dentin and pulp so each software is designed by a different software engineer and the values given are entirely different for different softwares you can try it out with any machine you will not get the same reading even in the difference of densities and howls field unit does not come into uh, cbct at all i would never mention that word of course for implants as uh, gion mentioned we take d1 d2 d3 as a uh, example for the bone value that's it thank you so much and this is the last question which is open to all and i want like each and uh, every speaker would speak uh, about their experience with cbct in your own practice uh, can we start with dr ambika uh, can you uh, just uh, share few yeah. experiences with cbct in your yeah, practice uh, talking about cbct in our own practice the uh, when it comes to because uh, we are catering today even to the undergraduates who are going to be the future of uh, dentistry a very essential point which is very much lagged i don't know why the reason for being lagged in every talk is that what is the uh, realistic view of what we are studying in the book see we all study the physics we study the great knowledge about whatever conditions we are dealing with but when it comes to sustainability in your daily life See, ultimately, dentistry is our bread and butter. When it comes to the maximum facial radiology, it my heart goes out to say that when I see the medical counterparts of radiology, wherein the stream is really blooming, we over here having so much of knowledge about each and every condition, yet we fail to lack even earning a living, having a CBCT center also. If someone would agree with me that despite having a CBCT center, the amount what you're going to have the output for a living is nil. you really negligible you have to depend on your daily maybe root canal treatments for that matter you know even though you are a specialist unless and until you do general dentistry you really cannot survive you know when it comes to oral medicine and radiology so i would like to uh, ask all the panelists and also for others to think about it that when we see ct scans cbct machines being so much superior so much advanced anything which has been so much of technology and advancement definitely has to be priced a little higher than the conventional things 
why is it that cbct is really charging anything for any scan the radiologist at the end for reporting is having <laughs> having anything in hand i i mean to say we have to see the practical aspect books are at one end i do agree to it you know learning is at another end practicing is totally a different thing so when it comes to sustainability using maxillofacial radiology what can we really do with it you know like don't don't we have to you know contribute to raising the you know bar a little bit to the medical counterpart having the platform for us as for the future generation you know are not just looking at omdr at a book level you know like okay this is a really good thing but in the books you know when it comes to practicality uh, i would like to refrain myself from this field you know practical thing so if since uh, dr jion and dr sham also have their own centers i would like them also to add their practical experiences you know about this field yeah, i'll 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 start Uh, the thing is, see, now I have completed almost uh, one and a half year with my center here, and uh, the biggest problem, if I sum it up in one line, is that CT scan is an essential medical modality. CBCT scan is a luxury. That's the biggest problem for most of the dentists. Anybody for them, CBCT is it really required? I mean, for medical people, even to rule out a condition, the patient is absolutely fine. But we just want to rule out whether they has a lesion or not. we take a ct scan and if the uh, reports are negative they'll be very happy i don't have that medical condition but cbct is the exact opposite if i take a cbct i should have something in my head or my face if the report is negative then they'll be like why the hell did i spend so much money uh, on a scan so cbct is treated as a luxury that mindset has to change if you are suspecting something we take a cbct if nothing comes out be happy that there is nothing in your there is no pathology as such but here cbct is taken as a last resort everything is done even a doctor asks multiple times the doctor is it really required they i know so many implant uh, doctors who practice implant with rvg or an opg and i'm not blaming them that was how it was done but now when you have a better imaging modality why don't you use the third dimension we get so many cases of failed implant or implant lodged into the sinus or uh, uh, touching the in, uh, alveolar the mandibular canal so many cases and of course we don't go around them telling the patient what has happened or uh, the file that has broken into a file that has reached the mandibular canal so, so many cases still the awareness is poor among the medical community itself and as uh, dr uh, ambika mentioned the reason why actually if you have a cbct center you should easily get let's say 100 cbcts a month but that's a myth it doesn't happen uh, you <laughs> after working hard and when i say working hard you really have to go around meet doctors tell them that we have a cbct here we barely get up to 50 cbcts a month and then there are a lot of opgs that come that eventually you get you a number that you can okay your house run so that is a fact i think it will change in time but as i said if people like us you and me who take the initiative conduct talks not just for us for every uh, field uh, the upcoming doctors the new the mds pass outs who have understood who have seen cbct and start using it it will change maybe in the next 5 years hopefully but we'll have to keep working towards it hmm. yeah is it my turn now yes, yes. yeah <laughs> yeah um see the, the i think first and the foremost part as we all discuss is the share the knowledge where cbct is applicable Uh, that's how in dentistry we can enhance the use of cbct like talks like this some presentations you know um, uh, i'll give an example i did my i started my bds in 1996 where i think i never heard of cbct that time of course the machine It was nothing by invented in 1996 it, itself so yeah. even during my post graduation time in 2004 to 7 Uh, we uh, we didn't have cbct machine so uh, even in, uh, in the, if i even though i did my post graduation in oral medicine radiology we are not aware of cbct so if this is a condition of uh, the oral medicine post graduate then you just imagine about uh, other specialty dentists so most of the dentists know that you know cbct is being used for implant placement that is a wide uh, you know widespread uh, uh, knowledge but uh, as a oral radiologist we all should uh, increase this awareness of cbct usage um, at times when you what we see in 2d image whether it is iopa or opg if at all dentist uh, demands for a cbct 
the internal structure of pathology is completely different, you know, whether it is a periapical lesion or a perforation or a fracture. So we get to see at least at this time, we have the facility to uh, diagnose the condition or the lesion uh, very accurately using the CBCT. Of course, there are some limitations as we have discussed, but at this time, we have that opportunity. Why can't we make use of it if the patient can afford for the uh, CBCT scan? So what, what I understood is apart from uh, implant uh, screening, we have to use the CBCT in other specialty of uh, dental practice for accurate diagnosis and treatment. So I think, yeah, that's what I wanted to tell. And of course, uh, the reporting, it really takes time. As uh, Dr. Ambika Tiwari said, um, we put a lot of effort, effort, you know, because uh, we can't do shortcoming. When we have something appearing, we like to highlight that, you know, that is why it is referred to us. So it takes a lot of time. That's why the price has to be decided accordingly. I really agree with the Dr. Ambika regarding that. And um, yeah, as, as we increase the talks like this, uh, and uh, do some idea programs, which will highlight the CBCT usage. Definitely it is going to, uh, the referral is going to increase. And uh, especially the BDS practitioners, we have to make them aware what is the application of CBCT in different fields of dentistry. Um, be hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, doctors. Thank you. Um... Now it's a turn of Dr. Prof. Shiva Balakrishnan. Your ex please share your experience with CBCT in your practice. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have a CBCT, but I would like to mention one person's name. Being a dentist after finishing or completing my oral medicine and radiology, I started to work in Madurai. There was one uh, MD radiologist who accepted me. I requested him that I want to uh, learn CT and MRI in your center. I would like to mention his name. His name is uh, KG Srinivasan from Madurai. A KG scans. He has three scan centers of CT and MRI. There are almost 150 scans taken per day. They were the ones who initiated me and uh, gave me the idea of, I have shared a book with everyone I think with almost all the colleges in India, that is a, a CBCT, I mean, a, a MRI made easy. It's a very easy book with all cartoons helping you to understand MRI because I did not understand MRI from White and Parova. I'll tell you blankly. This book was such interesting and they guided me on how a CT machine works. I had the opportunity to align the magnet once in a MRI machine with the help of a technician. If it's someone who has inspired me for the line of radiology, I think this is a man who has encouraged me openly. Being an MD radiologist, he would have asked me directly, uh, dentist, what do you want to do with the CT and MRI machine? No, but he encouraged me. The second thing is I've been uh, given the opportunity to, to work as a key opinion leader for J. Morita, India. And... Uh, I mostly started digging into the engineering part, I mean, the physics part of the machine and understanding the physics of it, which is very important. That is when I could understand most of the basics of softwares. Can a different software be integrated to a machine that you like? Uh, what are the DICOM files you get it? How do you manipulate DICOM files? And uh, I've started to learn from the base level. And I wanted to, uh, I, I'm sure most of the dentists do not know the back filtered, back filtered projection algorithm mm -hmm. and the people who work on all our raw data, converting it to CBCT, I mean, or to DICOM data are triple E engineers. Triple E people are the ones who work on MATLAB to make our data from raw data to DICOM files and make it with clearly. Uh, you can all go to uh, YouTube and please check a video, Homemade CBCT. Please see this video. They use a sensor, RVG sensor, and take a 360 exposure with an IOPA machine and convert it to a 3D on a MATLAB. Uh, that is the basic part, which I've, I was much interested into the software line. So I kept digging into softwares and other machines. 
so i should thank uh, amis university malaysia and amropen for bringing me on this platform after so many years and uh, uh, frankly i am uh, what to say i have to thank all the members of dmfr india for encouraging me the uh, whatsapp group was started in 2014 where i had to uh, make a call and invite one by one person but today i see the group is always full there is no place for somebody else to come into the group people are in demand i think uh, they have given me the uh, encouragement and uh, what to say uh, so much of energy that whatever i have started they have supported me so much and uh, there are so many uh, images that keep coming and so many questions that get clarified senior staff i would like to mention dr umar ji sir who has always been guiding us in the group one of my professors dr shailesh lele who was very interested in radiology he was also an inspiration to me when i studied in cords davangari and i should mention one more person dr rajan during my pg time but uh, to tell you frankly among out of all this the one who encouraged me into the radiology line is my radiology technician i have taken uh, general radiology x rays during my Uh, mds time and my technician gave me the real uh, boost or taught me freely so i feel if we had the uh, uh, what to say motto to teach everyone and uh, educate them this line surely we would have many fans following us uh, very good job dr sham i am happy that you all have come forward and jion and uh, ambika tiwari and uh, priyadarshini thank you for giving me this opportunity to come forward thank you very much Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. With, yes, thank it you was so a very good talk. It was, it was a very good talk, Dr. Sham. Thank you so much for all your support and uh, yeah, action. very cool and, question. And an excellent work by Amropin and Ames. And I think it's only one way to go, and that is forward. So I think we'll all go there. And eventually, yeah. maybe in a in a year or two's time, we can say that yes, CBCT has it has already become the next thing, and in time, everybody will start using it. and of course there will be more centers in every city but <laughs> irrespective of that it will really help and not just dentists as you said ent they have a huge role to play they really use cbct and most of them are not aware how much better it is compared to ct in their line so as you said in time yeah that's thank true. you so, thank you so much thank you so much uh, dr sham Dr. Jion and uh, Dr. Prof. Uh, Shiva and Dr. Ambika for sp uh, spending your valuable time with us with lots of information, um, both as an academician, clinician, and as an entrepreneurs like you're owning your uh, imaging centers. It gives us uh, insight really. Thank you so much. With this, we'll conclude the talk, and we can meet again uh, on next Saturday, ten ten thirty p.m. Sorry, a.m. <laughs> and 11 uh, pm malaysia time thank you so much thank you all thank you dr priya thank you thank Im you imsc university and amrop in india for giving me this opportunity we'll meet again soon thank you namaste yeah definitely thank you thank you so much